This is the cardiac cycle. The cardiac cycle is all the events associated with one heartbeat. A lot of times books will break this down into about six different steps. And this might help you, this slide. Um, it doesn't help me really. So I don't know, I can't imagine that it's helping you, but you know, if it does, great. There's lots of videos on this that slow it down and that explain it differently. And I would encourage you to um, check those out. You know, just um, go to YouTube and, and look up um, cardiac cycle. Right, some of them get too much into it and, and some of them are really good at explaining it. So anyway, I, I tried to make this a little bit um, easier and I broke it down into three steps. Right, and the, the three steps that I broke it down into were the same ones as the, um, pretty much as the EKG. So if you remember the EKG, what do each of the three parts measure? The T wave measures atrial depolarization. Then the QRS is ventricular depolarization. And then the T wave is ventricular repolarization. So really what you're talking about is the atrium are gonna contract, the ventricle is gonna contract, and then the whole heart's going to relax. That's what the T wave is, ventricular repolarization. Ventricles are repolarizing, they're gonna relax. And then you might think, well, what about the atria? They're relaxing too. So atria contract, ventricles contract, so it's like that, and then whole heart relaxes. Atrium ventricle relax, atrium ventricle relax. Um, I was surprised I was able to do that with my hands. Um, so, so instead of saying contraction, we're going to say systole. And instead of saying um, relaxation, we're going to say diastole. Um, and by the way, just some people say words different. Systole, um, diastole, diastole. You know, they like don't don't correct people because there's different ways to say it. Like like the word, uh, like your small intestines, duodenum, duodenum, they're both correct. So just as like a little bit of future advice, don't bother correcting people because um, you might look stupid, so. Um, let's talk about ventricular systole. If you understand the cardiac cycle, you have a really good idea about how the heart works in, in general. So, um, this is a cycle, so it keeps going. So wherever I start, there's a step right before. So we're starting in the atria. The atria are going to contract, because that's what systole means. And the atria have been filling with blood, so they're not contracted yet. They're filling up with blood. The, um, the ventricles are, are also relaxed. So I've got it kind of listed here. So the, the, um, the atria are filling with blood. And then what's going to happen is that as they fill up with blood, so above my hands is the atrium and below my hands is the ventricle. So they're filling with blood above my, my hands. It's, that's the atrium and it's filling with blood. And at some point it's going to get heavy enough, or let's say really it's pressure. There's enough pressure in there that it pops those AV valves open and then all the blood just drops into the um, ventricle. So it's just like a door in the floor, right? When you just put enough weight on that door, it just breaks open and you just fall to the next floor. And that's what happens with the blood. So before you've even had a contraction, you've already had blood open the AV valve because of the pressure, it opens the AV valve and the blood drops into the ventricle. So that's what I'm putting up here. Rapid ventricular filling had just occurred, meaning that those atrial ventricular valves just popped open because of the pressure behind it and the blood dropped into the ventricle. And I'm telling you here that the ventricle is in diastole, so it's still relaxed. In fact, nothing's contracted yet. There's still some blood left in that atrium. So, the, eight, the, the AV valve opened, and I'm going to stop doing this eventually with my fingers, but the AV, AV valve opened, 
the blood dropped into the ventricle, there's still some blood left in the atrium. It didn't all fall in, some of it's still left. So that's why we have atrial systole or atrial contraction. So the atria contract to push the rest of that blood into the ventricles. We want all that blood in the ventricles. We don't want to leave any of it behind. So the AV valves are open, but the semilunar valves are closed because if the atrium are contract, if the atria are contracting, the ventricles for sure are going to be relaxed. You know, unless there's something wrong with the heart, they don't contract at the same time. If the ventricles are contracting, the atria are not, and vice versa. So the atria are contracting, the semilunar valves are closed, the AV valves are open, and now we have blood in the, um, after you push the rest of the blood into the ventricle, we have blood in the ventricle. How much blood is in the ventricle? That is called end diastolic volume. So diastolic refers to the ventricle. So this whole time, the ventricle has been relaxed. How much blood is in that ventricle while it's relaxed? And around 130 milliliters, right? You could get hung up on the numbers, but it's better to understand what end diastolic volume is. It's how much blood is in the ventricle when it's relaxed and when the atria have contracted. Okay, so now the blood's out of the atria, blood's in the ventricle, and now we have to talk about the ventricles contracting. So now it's the ventricle's turn. Ventricles are going to contract, so it starts squeezing. So, so um, you know, it starts squeezing, and, and, and there's two doors. There's a door, a valve. There's a valve leading back up into the atrium, but that works. Here's, here's me with my hands again. That only goes like this. Right, so it can't go back up. It's going to close the door. But there's another valve that opens out. Right, that's the semilunar valves. So you're building up pressure in that ventricle. That blood tries to go back up into the atria. No, the AV valves close. And instead, the semilunar valves are going to pop open, and that blood's going to leave. And so not all of that blood makes it out. In an ideal world, we would want all of that blood out, but um, it just doesn't happen. So a lot of that blood leaves the ventricles, but not all of it. So now we have something called end systolic volume. So how much blood is left in the ventricle after the ventricle contracted? And so if we have these two numbers, we can figure out stroke volume. And stroke volume is just a way of saying how much blood is that heart pumping out every time? Like every time the heart beats, how much blood is leaving the heart? So we look at how much blood was in the ventricles when they were relaxed, how much blood is, and that's the first number here, EDV and diastolic volume, how much blood is in the ventricles after contracted, and whatever is left, you just subtract that and you can figure out what's not in the ventricle anymore. So, you know, this is how much is in there during um, contraction. This is how much it is in there during relaxation. That means that our stroke volume in this case um, would be like 60, right? Don't get hung up on numbers. These are just, these are just numbers, right? It's not, um, you know, around, around these numbers. Right, maybe stroke volume is maybe 65, maybe stroke volume is 70. So anyway, it's not about the numbers, it's about what does it mean. So, okay, now we're on relaxation. So the whole heart is going to relax. The atrium have contracted, then the ventricles contracted, now the whole heart's going to relax. So that doesn't mean nothing's happening. Things are still happening, but the atrium and the atria and the ventricular, we have atrial and we have ventricular diastole or diastole. So no contractions here, but stuff is going on. The atrium is filling with blood. So there's still blood coming back from pulmonary circulation through the pulmonary veins. And then you still have blood coming back from systemic circulation via the two vena cava. So blood's filling. 
Blood's filling the atrium. So we're kind of back at this first part again. Blood's now filling the atrium, and eventually the atrium's gonna get full enough where the AV valves are gonna open. Right, but right now they're closed. Blood's filling the um, blood's filling the atria. Blood that had just been ejected from the ventricles is going to turn around and try to go back into the ventricles because when those ventricles relax, the pressure dropped, so that blood wants to go back. It cannot get back in because semilunar valves. The semilunar valves close, that prevents the blood from going back into the ventricles. Instead, if you remember from the last lecture, where does some of this blood go? It's my pause to drink coffee so you can think about it. Blood's flowing back into the ventricle. It cannot do it because the semilunar valve's closed. Where does some of that blood go instead? Yes, coronary, coronary vessels. So the blood flows towards the semilunar valves and closes them. And then you have, I didn't really need to put isovolumetric relaxation in here, but in case you run into it somewhere in the future, um, it just means that there's a brief period of time where all, all four valves are closed. It actually happens twice in a cardiac cycle. So if you're reading the book, you might see isovolumetric contraction, isovolumetric relaxation. Um, if you understand it, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. Um, but this is the cardiac cycle. And then you keep going, you know, eventually enough blood, blood's filling the atria, enough blood gets in there that um, thought I wouldn't do it, but I did it. The AV valves open, right? And then you have rapid ventricular filling. We're back to the first step again. So that is um, maybe a lot of information, but um, you know, if you understand how the heart works, then all of this stuff will make sense and, and you'll get it. But please try to understand this. This is very important. I mean, this is essentially uh, heart physiology. Um, here's a couple of other terms. Cardiac output is stroke volume times your heart rate. Right, so stroke volume is, let's say, it's 60, and your heart is beating um, 60 times a minute. So that would be, you know, 60 mils times 60 would be, what, 3,600 milliliters or 3.6 liters. So, by the way, if that kind of confused you, um, get it through your head. 1,000 milliliters in one liter. I know this is not part of this class, but get it in your head. 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Therefore, 500 milliliters is half a liter. You should be able to just do that, right? 3,600 milliliters, 3.6 liters. That should just be, at least that conversion should be quick. All right, anyway, cardiac reserve. How much when you're sleeping versus when you're running from someone with a chainsaw you know your heart can can put out four to five times more blood if it has to that's called cardiac reserve this is i believe the last part of this stroke volume remember how much blood is getting pushed out of the heart what can regulate it what are factors regulating stroke volume well the first is preload so how much can that venture, and we're really, I, I put heart here, we're really talking about the ventricle. The ventricles are the, well, anyway. So how much will that ventricle stretch out before it contracts? The more you can get it to stretch, that means the more blood you can get in there so that when it contracts, it's going to push more blood out, right? So, so that's preload. Contractility is the forcefulness of the contraction. You know, how forceful do you contract that ventricle, and that's going to push more blood out, right? And each of these three, you're, you're going to run across, you know, in, in practice. And then afterload. So <clears throat> how much pressure can you build up in the uh, ventricle before the semilunar valve opens 
and the blood goes out. So the pressure that must be exceeded before ventricular ejection can occur. I'm just saying how much pressure can you build up in that ventricle before <clears throat> before the semilunar valves open and the and the blood is ejected. So um, norepinephrine. We never, I don't think we talked about exactly how it works. We know how we know how epinephrine works. What does norepinephrine do? It increases contractility. Right? So norepinephrine, not necessarily its main job, its main job is not necessarily raising heart rate, but it's more of a, you know, it, it, it increases the forcefulness of the contraction, which that's that's good. So you have an increased heart rate, but you also have more blood coming out each time the heart beats. But anyway, that's the, those are the factors regulating stroke volume. I am at the end of this, and I've got, I believe, um, one more uh, lecture to give on the heart.